Hello everyone, this is Meenakshi Ramesh from TapYourWayToHealing.com. Um, as we continue to do the uh, April uh, series, series of videos in April to educate, um, inspire and empower uh, the audience, I have um, two uh, guests with me today, two beautiful souls. Um, I connected with them recently. Um, I connected with them last year, sometime in September. And uh, I am I'm super happy and excited to have both of them um, on um, today's video and uh, today's show as we continue this uh, series of videos um, to honor neurodiversity and uh, autism as April is Autism Awareness Month. So I have, I have here David Block and Master Claudia Block. Um, before we get started with our conversation, I would like to read David and Master Claudia's bio. David Block is a visionary young entrepreneur with a heart of gold. Passionate about making a difference, David took the bold step of opening an adult day program for individuals with special needs. Through dedication and tireless effort, David has created a nurturing environment where each participant receives personalized care and support. But David's impact doesn't stop there. As a savvy entrepreneur, he has demonstrated remarkable business acumen in establishing and running the program, setting an inspiring example for others in the industry. Beyond business success, David is deeply committed to giving back to his community whether through charitable initiatives, volunteering efforts, or simply lending a helping hand, he continually strives to make the world a better place for all. Welcome, David. Thank you for taking this time and nice talking to, to me here. and my audience. Yeah, you're welcome. Master Claudia Block is a dedicated Tai Chi master with a wealth of experience spanning nearly a decade. Passionate about the art of Tai Chi, Claudia has devoted herself to mastering its principles and sharing its benefits with others. As a Tai Chi instructor, Claudia brings a unique blend of expertise, compassion, and wisdom to her practice. With her patient guidance and deep understanding of the art, she empowers her students to cultivate balance, harmony, and inner peace in their lives. With each graceful movement, Claudia embodies the essence of Tai Chi, inspiring those around her to embrace mindfulness, resilience, and holistic well-being. Through her teaching, she continues to touch the hearts and transform the lives of her students, making a profound impact on their journey toward health and vitality. Welcome, Claudia Block, uh, to my channel, and uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with my audience. So, so I want much. to get started with. You're welcome. I'll get started with David first. So, David, my first question to you is: How did you get interested in helping the special needs uh, community and population? Well, it all started back when I was in high school. I was a senior in. Uh, Mission San Jose High School, and I needed to complete my college curriculum, my high school hours for graduation. And I was like, all right. Um, so I applied to this science camp and I was in charge of six boys for a week. And I was like, how hard could that be? But little did I find out that was the most difficult, stressful thing I've ever done. Taking care of these boys, following the schedule, making sure that everyone was where they needed to be at that point of time. And as time went by, I really did develop a close bond with these boys. And after that period of time, I created a bond, like a new friendship with them. And I was like, wow, I really do enjoy outsourcing my time and really communicating with others like this. So I was like, all right, now how can I make a career out of this hobby? And I went to carrot.com, applied for a bunch of families, and I've worked with a variety. I've worked with toddlers, infants, adolescents, teenagers, even adults. 
And I figured the only one who truly valued my expertise and my time were the special needs community. No matter what I did, whether it be going out to the mall, whether it be going to a walk in the park, they were the only ones who truly valued my time. And I was like, very grateful for that. I was looking forward to spending every day with them because whether we'd be going to the park or uh, going to the beach or going to the zoo, they'd be having that same level of energy the first time to the 50th time. And that's what I really enjoy about taking out these boys, just constantly having that connection with one another and sharing that bond. Yeah, that's what got me started awesome. with Thank this you. business. Yeah. Thank you, David. Very well said. Yes. Um, it's, um, I truly believe that we live in a friendly universe and there are many heart-centered people out there. So I can definitely say that you have the heart to serve this, uh, oh. serve, uh, the, 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 you. You know, the, the participants, the, the individuals, the children and the families. Um, so my next question to you is, as a caregiver, um, you know, we all can go through burnout, um, giving a lot of care and as a parent and your mom knows that and I know that. So mm -hmm. what practices do you do to take good care of yourself so that you are physically and mentally fit to handle the needs of these individuals? So first thing that's the most important for me is Fitness, 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 fitness. I always emphasize fitness highly in my program. I always make sure that if you have an active body, not just that, an active mm -hmm. mind, an active environment, an active place that you put yourself in, then you don't really have time to feel what you feel inside. I don't know. I, I just feel like the more I fill my schedule up and I'm like, all right, my plate's full. All right, my plate's full. I'm going to keep adding more and more food until I can't eat because I was like, all right, what do I do when my, my hands are full and I'm already tied up? I get another plate. And once I figure that out, then I just kind of just took a deep breath and I just, ah, that was my relief. Figuring out that just because your plate's full doesn't mean that you're done eating. You you can have multiple plates on the dinner table that can help alleviate that stress. Having a community that's going to be by your side is also very therapeutic because I express myself to them like it's like therapy almost, you know, telling them and then they give me insights on how to improve, where did I go wrong, what could have been dealt with better and how to move forward from that situation. And that's what I used to like really just let go, just talking about how I feel. Awesome, David. Um, <clears throat> so in your program, I know that you serve a wide range of individuals on the spectrum and um I, how do you how do you make sure that the program is individualized um, and it fits the needs of the participant? That's a very good question. So we have clients who are very physically active. We have clients who are more on the moderate side of activity. We have clients who love to go out. We have clients who love to stay in. So we're like, all right, if we have an agenda as a group to go to X location for the day and we have others who just want to stay in no problem at all we compensate by meeting in the middle where we would split the group in half and the ones that want to go they go with the one caregiver and the ones that want to stay they stay with other caregiver and i have a behavioralist i have tai chi masters i have soon to be music therapists to be coming into the uh program where on the days that they don't feel like going out, I always have that emergency pocket where we're going to be doing some activity at home. I notice that majority of these, my clients, they, they don't like to stay home longer than two hours. That's their max. It's like two hours and they're like, they start getting restless. They start wandering around. They start wanting to go out. They start wanting to do some activities. And I'm like, all right, that's beautiful. So I, instead of going out all the time, we bring the activities to them. And that helps like bring them a sense, looking, making them feel 
like they have the opportunity to do something looking forward to coming to this program. That's the objective, to make them want to come here, not making them feel like, oh, okay, it's a chore. Oh, it's another day. I got to come here. It's like, wow, I get to go here. Wow, I get to see these instructors. Wow, I get to see my friends today. That's the kind of environment I want to have for them. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so um, I think you already answered this question, but my next question to you was, you know, behavioral therapies and interventions has changed the, uh, you know, the trajectory has changed so much in the last two decades, oh, yeah. uh, as far as I know. And um, all therapies and interventions have the client as the um, it's, it's, it's become a client-centered approach, which is really good, um, wherein the client's needs are, you know, taken into consideration. So could you give an example of um, how you do this in your program? It's, especially, I'm, I'm curious to know when there are, um, uh, when someone, a uh, participant is going through um, some challenges in their mood and their behaviors. Yeah. So I've read so many behavioralist books. I've read I, I love to figure out like how I can make an impact on these families' lives. Ultimately, no one kid is perfect, whether they be special needs or non-special needs, whether they be an adult or a child, you know, everybody has their diversity that they go through and they have to overcome. And I like to be that helping hand for them. So uh, I've noticed like they have the, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, is it ABA, ABA training where yeah, yeah. a lot of the times, mm -hmm. what I remember for ABA training for one of my clients back in the day, um, he had a difficult time expressing himself, but he knew inside what he wanted to do. So a technique that they taught me would be like, do you want to do this or do you want to do this? And they, the, the client would put their hand on the one they want to do, right? And I was like, okay, that's pretty good. But majority of the times uh, the parents want the, the client to be more like interactive rather than them having to lead the conversation because you could be offering them something that they don't even want to do any of those things to begin with. So uh, the training that we tend to do for our program is it's very unique in a sense. We personalize for, you know, not every single problem that is out there can be found in a book. So we had to get very creative with some of our issues. For instance, we had a client who they were obsessed with dumping water and we were like, all right, how can we make an impact on taking a relieving some of that stress that they have when they see water? So we automatically knew that whenever we told them, no, stop, don't do this, they would just get triggered. That word of hearing no, that word of hearing stop, that word of those powerful words, like cause them to react in such a powerful way. So we flip the switch. Every single time they are doing something that they're not supposed to do, we encourage it. We're like, all right, you don't want to dump it? Of course, dump it, dump it. So they don't have that stress and anxiety that comes with the memory that they have associated with it. And from there, once they know that this is a safe environment, that we will be here to help them grow rather than to be like putting them down and telling them they can't do this and showing them what's the right way of doing it. We let them experiment on their own to see, okay, I have the freedom to do what I want respectfully. How can I make sure that I'm doing what feels right to me while also being respectable to others. And we meet in the middle where we, if they like to dump water, we we set out a bunch of water bottles. And if you want to dump, go ahead. But just know that you can only dump in certain areas because majority of the times they would just dump indoors, outdoors, wherever they wanted to dump. But now as the time goes by, they're learning to dump on the grass, on the dirt, on the trees. And, you know, it's little steps like that that help them feel more comfortable in their own skin where they're like, all right, now I know that I can dump whenever I want. I just have to be more conscious about where I do it. And yeah, that's how we take care of our clients, you know, try to help them out the best we can. That's a classic example of, you know, how... Um, uh... Yeah, when you have the 
uh, just kind of developing a rapport with them and you know building the trust that you know you're not going to really they're not going to be reprimanded or like <laughs> you know mm-hmm. somebody is going to just knock them out yeah yeah mm-hmm. so thank you thank you for sharing that david mm-hmm. um so <laughs> um what is your vision for individuals with special needs do you have a vision for them if you have you can share <laughs> so i always have the same vision for all the parents that i've had so far that i had to encounter a lot of the times since covid was like what three, four years ago um i had a lot of clients who just they they just like went cold turkey and they were just more like all right covid happened we can't go out anyways because even we have to stay in because of the masks so it kind of they worked so hard to do uh, to get where they are today and then they just like kind of slowed down and regressed a little bit and i was like all right so whenever some of my clients go out in public they don't know how to react anymore socially and they struggle fitting in and that's where we came in we always want to let they even had the parents had some sort of anxiety letting their kids out and i was like okay how can we relieve the anxiety without us being there so that's what i that was my main goal to make sure that all the families whether like they know for a fact that if they take their loved one out that their loved one is going to behave their loved one's going to listen to them and their loved one knows what to do when they're in these stressful environments these loud high sensory environments and they're yeah and letting them know the way that we practice that is by going to high sensory environments each and every day, letting them feel comfortable in their own skin in these high, fast environments. And that's what makes them feel more comfortable by practicing it every day, getting the social interaction that they lacked a few years back and just picking up where they last left off so that they can grow and eventually just be happier. Awesome, David. That's a classic example of, uh, you know, exposure, like exposure therapy and like helping them desensitize from the, you know, sensory overload. Beautiful. Uh, my last question is, I think you already answered this, but again, if you were well, any final thoughts on, um, you know, what you want parents to know, um, because as, as, as we are primary caregivers, what do you want us to know when we team up with you for extra care and support? That's a very good question to wrap it all up. All right. So a lot of the times these my clients, they drop off. I mean, they just give us their kid and they're like, all right, we got a breather. Time for cleaning up the house, time to get some work done, time to just have a nice us time. And that's a big reason why we do it, too, to give them the freedom to do what they want when they want to do it. But they also have to remember that this is a team effort that we do all these precautions. We teach them all these new skills. We show them what is right and what is wrong. And we teach them how to grow from every situation that they go through. Not for them to just relapse on what the parents have done. So a lot of the times we are on the same page about like improving, trying to grow, where we create the IPP together, where we have to figure out where they want us to focus most of their energy in. And once we start drilling down on the root of their problems, we have to remember that we have to pivot to having an open mind about new solutions rather than being closed-minded. Because a lot of the times the parents think that it's, oh, right, my kid has this problem and it's his fault and I feel stressed out because of him. But it's a two-way street, right? It's not just his fault. He's learning these behaviors from somewhere. He, he like, you must have slipped up some way along the way. So we had to let him know that We provide services not just for your kid, but we provide services for the families as well so that they are able to learn and grow alongside him, to hold his hand and feel what he feels as well. That's what we want, to be a family, all of us, letting them know that through thick and thin, we will be available all day, anytime, because that's what family does.
Awesome, David. Beautifully said. Thank you so much for your time and uh, sharing your, you know, thoughts and insights. And um, over to um, Claudia now. Um, I'd love. How did you get interested in Tai Chi, Claudia? Um, about uh, five years ago, I was going through a um, dark moment in my life. I had beautiful family, beautiful marriage, but I could not see happiness inside me. And um, my cousin from Mexico City came to visit. And she talked about, she takes Tai Chi and she says, hey, I, I came to the San Francisco. There's a lot of Tai Chi schools. Have you heard of them? And I've been in this country for 30 something years. And I know I've seen it on TV, but that's as far. And she said, it is beautiful. Get into it and get into it for real. She says, very serious. And um, I said, okay. I was looking at the, I, I went to the dentist, look around, came outside. And I saw my school, body and brain, Tai Chi, yoga and meditation. And I went straight and five years, I graduated and that's my life is cool. That's how I got into it. And beautiful. I, what Tai Chi means? Yeah. I thought I got into the most beautiful exercise, uh, spiritual complete. Tai Chi means healing movements that we do to our body. And I did not understand that, what that meant, but that's what Tai Chi means. Heals, move, healing movements that they heal your chakras while you move mm. with vibrations. And I, mm. it took me, it takes a long time, it's a lifetime, uh, uh, mm. homework practice to get uh, very 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 familiar I've been five years mm. and I am I am familiar I understand it I see it and now I know what I want that's what my right, right. means right and when you were talking about chakras like uh, I, I have a clear uh, picture of that like the, all the seven chakras in my mind and you know when energy gets when the, when our energy centers get blocked uh, you know that's when we have uh, you know issues in our physical health mental health and so on and so forth so from what you're saying uh, these uh, healing movements can help unblock those uh, channels and you know that's the that's the feeling i get am i right that is very true because the exercise that i do that we do in tai chi there are anybody can make it do it with you only need these are your tools your hands okay so hands, these okay. tools these beautiful tools that we all have mm -hmm. are going to take care of our heart our stomach and our brain mm. but just doing this rubbing our head 50 times mm. it opens our mm. main chakra mm. so mm. that's wow. chakras and that's movements. so beautiful so simple and easy to use but then uh, using it is important so some of yes. the time most of the times what happens is when something is very simple we just ignore it like you know oh, it's so simple <laughs> we may even question if it will be effective you know if something is simple so but i uh, i yes. totally get what you're we saying forget, <laughs> we forget how simple we can uh we can mm, be but with focus mm. right yeah focus attention yes mm -hmm. yes it's not just any movement. It's just movement with focused attention. Yes. yes. That's, that's the difference. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because movement is something, you know, you can, when we are walking, running, we are still moving our bodies. When we are dancing, we're still moving our bodies. But this is different. And I think yeah. that's why uh, Sudarshan loves Tai Chi, because we do an exercise for his mm -hmm. healing uh, chakra, mm -hmm. which is his intestines, his danja. Danja, mm -hmm. it means stomach mm -hmm. in Korean. So we practice a lot in our danja. And there's an exercise that Sudarshan loves doing it. And he, oh, okay. 
he he we we do it for about eight to ten minutes and he okay. with a smile with the rhythm and mm -hmm. with focus he mm -hmm. does it mm -hmm. and he loves it oh okay he smiles oh. and smiles <laughs> and smiles <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much for teaching that to, uh, you know, teaching this exercise to him. Yeah, anything that's healing, that's power. It's powerful. Um, so, the, um, as you, I know, you said it's very simple. The tools are in our hands. But sometimes, do you also modify the exercises? Do you modify no. them? No, they are just so. They are so specifically for our chakras that there any like I said, anybody can do with them. The only modification mm -hmm. is just instead of me doing a hundred, I do thirty. Okay. Uh, other than that, okay. I do uh, my class is about vibration, about mm -hmm. chakras, breathing, and a lot of movements. I like how you mentioned that question okay. too. How modification that you brought it up. Uh, I watched this commercial mm -hmm. the other day how there was this uh, lady who had Down syndrome and she was saying that uh, people modify everything for us, assuming that we can never do it in the first place. But we mm -hmm. love to challenge our clients with the opportunity mm -hmm. to see what they're really made of. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Sadarson is a great example because he's got endurance like somebody i've never seen he could run mm -hmm. for as long as he wants he could do mm -hmm. everything that anyone else could do if not better than them and that's why we like to put a lot of pressure on him like to see what he's truly made of because a lot of the times if he has pillows and cushions everywhere then he'll never know like how hard it will be when he falls and when he falls we'll let him know that we'll pick him back up and we'll be there by his side through thick and thin. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you, David. I know he's in good hands and thank you. Thank you for all the love, uh, support and care that you extend towards him. Mm -hmm. um, How do I see My helping... last question. Oh, I'm sorry. How do I see no, helping ahead, yeah. Tai Chi for kids? How do I see that is helping? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yes. I'm teaching them vibrations that they know they're already doing them. They already, for example, mm -hmm. this vibration of that. Mm -hmm. Right. I do that. Right. A lot of them and have this. Yes. Okay. And I do that. Okay. And so we do it with music. And instead of just going fast, I teach them that we can go feel the music, mm -hmm. feeling it. Mm -hmm. Instead of just quickly, mm -hmm. I teach the feeling. Go with rhythm. Yeah. Go the rhythm mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. Like Sudarshan mm, doesn't mm. didn't know what how to dance or what, like just the mm. number eight movement. I teach a lot of mm. a lot of number eight movements, mm. and mm. that mm. feeling of even going like mm. this with your mm. with your hands on touching your hand uh, heart, mm. and you go heart. back and forth slowly with rhythm, rhythm, mm. rhythm. It changes their. I mean, they start be, they they start focusing. They start breathing mm. and they start feeling a, spir mm. a spirituality. Mm. Mm. Right, right. So and for a lot changed. of them, including in, yeah, for a lot of them, slowing down is is a big challenge. Like, like they just want to like okay, go, okay, okay, what's next? What's next? Let me rush and push mm. through and just get it done. Mm. So you know, when you actually you know yeah. practicing mindfulness and slowing down is it's very very helpful. Very helpful. Yeah, helps with that processing and focus both. Yeah. Anything else you would like to share, Master Claudia? Um, I have another beautiful student that sometimes he uh, he doesn't necessarily does the exercises, but just for him to feel the breathing of his heart mm -hmm. and closing his eyes, that is an exercise for him. And that is beautiful. Yeah. Is and for a lot of... Uh, 
lot of uh, you know individuals even closing their eyes is very hard like you know it's something mm-hmm. very challenging so even that is that it requires practice you know just if you ask them to close their eyes i think they they develop a sense of fear and anxiety so that's really good practice you know um um it, you know when we pray we close our eyes and we pray and so that's something we practice at home as well but uh, i know in a lot of individuals in the spectrum they have difficult challenges in closing their eyes and that's good practice as well it is yeah. i yeah. i yeah. i also have another um student and that will be my last to share we he likes to talk very loud mm. and he's happy mm. but he likes to talk very loud mm. so there's a song that we we uh we scream we talk mm. like we what well, i teach him how to scream and it's okay there mm. it's very okay mm. so he sings his mm. song he long i mean he becomes like a free bird screaming mm. and mm. that for him mm. is mm. absolutely beautiful mm. calms him down so that's mm. a powerful mm. exercise Once- for him for them right. for and everybody you do that combining with some movements yes you do that with some movements okay okay, okay. yes and beautiful. uh thank uh, you beautiful yeah um <laughs> again my last question to you would be like you know what do you what would you like parents to know who reach out to you for care and support? oh i will um we we are getting together then and i mm. i love mm. my son <laughs> <laughs> Um, to get, uh, I would like parents to see, to come and see the class, to come and take mm. the class with their kids, and, mm. and and have at least once a month parents, just parents, mm. a class, mm. so you okay. guys see what um, what the kids. For example, mm. there's a vibration that we do this, and my mm-hmm. student learn that vibration. By getting ang- every time he feels angry, he goes one, two, mm. three, and that's what is used for. Mm. And he learned how to use mm. it. Now his mom needs to take the class. So the mom mm. yeah. is okay. like, "Oh, I know the feeling. I know what my son. There's a different path right. of communication." And that right. I want the parents to come and join that monthly class and and mm. come together, all of us, so the kids feel powerful. We could also come to you guys okay. as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, that would be great. I would love, you know, to, I would love be... to take a class so that I know what he's doing and I can do it with him. Yeah. Exactly. This should yeah. be, like I said, there's a, there's another way of communication. Mm. And let's bring it together and let me mm. let mm. me share it with all of you. So so that's what uh, we're doing. Mm. We're mm. gathering all together, our timing, our schedule, mm. our, a little bit of complication mm. right now. But that's what our future is looking for my vision beautiful beautiful vision whenever i used to go to go for a walk in the park i used to see a group of uh, you know people doing uh, tai chi in the mornings so these are like people probably well into their uh, 70s 80s maybe even 90s so i always used to think that you know this is when we were when you were sharing this is uh, this is a tool that can help uh, all of us age gracefully i think yeah and i yeah. I, I see that yeah. i see that shining through you through david as well <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time on a easter sunday and you know talking to me i really appreciate it thank you for thank all you. your help and support and it was lovely talking to both of you thank Likewise. you for sharing thank your you. wisdom you're very Have welcome a good day. Bye-bye. Happy you too Happy you too bye